In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, right ventricular enlargement and systolic dysfunction are associated with a nearly twofold increase in all cause mortality compared to patients with a normal right ventricle. Although hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is conventionally considered a left ventricular disease, right ventricular assessment has prognostic value. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Geske, a professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic in Cardiovascular Diseases. And today I'll be discussing with you the upcoming article in Mayo Clinic Proceedings, right ventricular enlargement and dysfunction are associated with increased all-cause mortality in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In this study, we assessed Mayo Clinic's prospectively collected hypertrophic cardiomyopathy registry between January 1st, 2000 and September 30th, 2012. Right ventricular size and function were sentently quantitatively categorized via transthoracic echocardiography as normal versus abnormal, with RV abnormal comprising both RV enlargement and RV systolic dysfunction. All cause mortality was the primary endpoint. Out of 1,878 hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients studied, only 71, which is 3.8%, had RV abnormality, once again, which comprised RV enlargement, RV systolic dysfunction, or both. Compared to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients with a normal right ventricle, patients with an abnormal right ventricle were older, more symptomatic, and had more atrial fibrillation. The age comparison was 57 plus or minus 14 versus 53 plus or minus 15 years with a p-value of 0.02. For symptom assessment, New York Heart Association class three to four was present in 62% of patients with RV abnormalities versus 49% with an, a normal right ventricle with a p-value of 0.03. And atrial fibrillation was much more prominent in patients with RV abnormalities, 54% versus 17% in patients with normal right ventricles with a p-value of 0 0.001. In addition, there was more ICD implantation, implantable cardiac defibrillators, in patients with RV abnormalities, 24% versus 11% with a p-value of 0 0.02. Medium follow-up in the study was 9.4 years with 311 deaths recorded. Patients with abnormal right ventricles had higher all-cause mortality compared to patients with normal right ventricles with a log rank p-value less than 0 0.001, with 24.1% versus 6.1% mortality seen at five years. In multivariable Cox modeling, RV abnormality was associated independently with all-cause mortality after adjusting for other co-founders with a hazard ratio of 1.89 a confidence interval spanning 1.18 to 3.03, and a p-value of 0 0.008. We were able to conclude that although perturbations in RV size and function were observed in less than 5% of patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, they were associated with nearly two-fold higher all-cause mortality at long-term follow-up. So how does this finding relate to clinical practice? Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy has largely been thought of as a left ventricular disease for decades. This is the largest study to focus on right ventricular size and function in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Although involvement of right ventricular hypertrophy has been reported, assessing size and function in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy has long been neglected. Our study demonstrates the importance of RV assessment at the time of echocardiography for risk stratification in this population. So what does this finding mean for patients? Right-sided heart abnormalities may be overlooked in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This study allows cardiologists to have another tool in their tool belt for determining prognosis, understanding disease progression, and assessing disease severity. Providers may choose to alter treatment or follow-up based on this information. This study used a semi-quantitative approach for assessing right ventricular abnormalities and confirming these findings by using quantitative RV size and function measurements would be of benefit. This study focused on echocardiographic evaluation. However, the role of cardiac MRI in the care of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy continues to grow and further incorporating a multimodality approach would be of benefit. Lastly, a prospective clinical trial with therapeutic options 
targeting right ventricular abnormalities may help us to uncover new approaches to improve outcomes in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients. I'd like to thank you for your time. For further details, I invite you to read the upcoming article in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.